everyone, Bernard here. I hope you're all staying safe and well. And welcome to my Citizen channel. Yeah, a little bit of a special today. Yeah, I've, as I've recorded this and two or three hours ago, we just heard that uh, the wonderful, well, he's a Manchester legend, isn't he? Really, we'll have to share him, won't we? Obviously, with that, them guys across the road. But, uh, of course, Brian Kidd, Kiddo, uh, is uh, leaving City after 12 years. Yeah, I mean, he's been on the cars with this COVID thing. I think we've not seen much of him, but... Uh, yeah, so I've done this little, it's a two-part, so this is part one. I look, I look back at his playing career with City, actually, his games and what he did at City rather, rather than what uh, perhaps he did as uh, as his recent role, which I'm not too sure how it's worded, what he was. It was he a coach, uh, assistant, I don't, I don't know how it was, but uh, hey, just as a little tribute from me anyway, and I'm sure all you City City fans out there to uh, the wonderful Brian Kidd kiddo and a, a little buy and a thank you. Uh, today so please join me and we do part one and hopefully yeah uh, don't you'll check out part two when that comes out as well but this is part one if you're new to the channel please push that subscribe button push the bell notification all these vlogs are coming out the new city pass city present uh obviously as soon as soon as the new season kicks off there'll be plenty of city present but it's all past at the moment i say this is a bit of a special on kiddo i didn't know i was going to be doing this one but uh put this one together uh in as a tribute for him and you of course uh, for you to enjoy and there's list if you check the links there's stuff for my uh, film and tv channel as well so if you have a look at that that's fantastic and there's links on screen for facebook and twitter and also uh, a little ebay shops i have for uh, posters and uh, dvds and board games as well so if you get a chance to have a look on ebay at those uh, those details that'd be fantastic all comments are welcome all your memories of brian kidd i've got special memories of brian kidd because it was an interesting time for me when he, he was at uh, manchester city but we'll go go more into that in a moment so leave us your comments and please thumbs up so it's nice to get thumbs out you know it's nice to get uh views but it's lovely to get thumbs up certainly with something like this when it's a little bit of a tribute as well right yeah it was uh possibly yeah definitely well i'll say possibly it definitely was my peak time of watching city between 1973 and about 1983 yeah until uh obviously work and being self-employed and young children popping along in the marriage and stuff like that Obviously, City was still important, but it became not quite as important, and I couldn't get quite to as many games. But obviously, from 73 to 83, I went to lots and lots of games, of course, and uh, this is the sort of period that Mr. Brian Kidd uh, was playing for City. He was bargain. He was definitely called a bargain. He was called a bargain at the time uh, when City signed him from Arsenal for just a, a modest, and it was modest at the time, in July 1976, uh, a modest £100,000 and he was 27 so possibly possibly at his peak if you like uh, obviously we, we got him just at the right time and uh, he joined the city he joined us and we were definitely big hitters as we were for most of the 70s we were most seasons we were one of the favorites to win the the league title it didn't quite didn't quite turn out that way, but uh, yeah, we were certainly one of the big hitters in the country crowd-wise as well with supporters. There'll be more on that in a moment as well. But uh, yeah, we were always pretty much uh, thought of fondly in the 70s as a big, big club, whether some people will like it or not. Uh, he spent two full seasons at City and a bit of one as well, which we'll talk about uh, that's mainly part two, the uh, second, uh, the bit of a season he spent at City, because quite a lot happened, so uh, that'll be part two. Uh, he normally wore the number eight or the number nine shirts, yeah, so he did, he did I think he had, did number 10 and number seven, obviously he was sub once as well, so he wore the number 12 once as well, but uh, yeah, in the, and in his to, in his two full seasons, as he was at Arsenal, his two seasons there before he joined us, he was our top scorer. Uh, the Manchester United apparent fanatic uh, caused a few raised eyebrows, no doubt, when he joined City. But this, uh, the fact that he came from Arsenal, didn't make it quite as bad. It wasn't, it wasn't seen as quite as bad as coming straight from United. Uh, but that was later dispelled when he when he stated during his time at City. I'm as blue as the keenest City fan. Well, there you go. But uh, as a boy, yeah, I think I think the problem there is he did have split loyalties. His, his dad was a blue and his mum was a red. I think his big brother Bernard, a uh, good name, uh, I think he was a red as well. He's, he's a really dyed-in-the-wool red, although uh, uh, I think his sister... I think his sister's more city leaning, uh, but his his big brother was a big United, a bit like mine. My big brother was a United fan, so there you go. But uh, yeah, with split lords with your dad supporting City and your mum supporting United, it's no wonder really, was it? So I was, I think he supported them both really, to be honest with you, when it comes down to the nitty gritty of it all, reading between the lines. Uh, 
He left United in 1974 after Wilf McGuinness was sacked. Yeah, I think he had a bit of a bit of a dodgy time early in his career at United as well, around the European Cup time. The European Cup time, he didn't quite agree with what was going on there. And certainly, when Wilf McGuinness got sacked, he became even more disillusioned. Uh, so he moved down to London. Uh, and Arsenal and of course uh, as I said despite being their top scorer he wasn't very happy down London so he did jump at the chance and I believe when he was going down to London actually Tony Buck was on the same train I believe but uh, I think we just bought uh, Chewart and Horswell at the time and I think the the inkling was that uh, it's a shame City hadn't come in for Brian Kerr. I think Kid might have changed his mind and uh, and dumped Arsenal at that stage. But uh, there you go. It's probably probably best that he didn't isn't it, under the circumstances. But uh, yeah, so obviously Tony Buck had probably not forgotten this. And obviously when the chance came uh, a couple of years later, in July 1976, of course, uh, Kid and Tony Buck uh, as, as manager jumped at the ch chance to bring in uh, Kid back up to, to Manchester and Main Road. Uh, it's not too much to say. I mean, this is in one of the articles in the 70s uh, to see that uh, Kid did sort of become an honorary king of the Kipax. Uh, yeah, so uh, obviously Colin was struggling a little bit in those, as you know, he had his injury and he was struggling to get back at that time. But uh, yeah, I mean, in one of the in one of the articles I'll quote in a bit, or it may be part two, I'm not too sure. Um, yeah, he was called the King of the Kipax in, in, in city publications sort of thing. So there you go. I'm sure Colin, Colin Bell wouldn't have minded uh, loaning him the title. And of course, uh, I don't think Dave and Sue Wallace would have probably minded either because uh, he, he wasn't a bad lad. He wasn't a bad lad, was he? Well, I'm not sure what the Stretford End thought as he was considered or he was considered the darling of the Stretford End. So there you go, no more. And he was our honorary King of the Kipax or Proviso or Standing King of the Kipax, let's say let's say that. And he's the sort of rare breed of Man of footballer who's Manchester born. Born and bred, and he went on to play for both teams. There's not many of them about, and also featuring Euro com European competition for both clubs. Again, probably not much. Of, so unless someone like uh, uh, Phil Foden goes to uh, United in the future, I wash my mouth out with that soap and water. Uh, yeah, it's, it's something that doesn't really happen that often, if at all. Uh, he made his debut in a 2-2 draw at Leicester City uh, game on the 21st of August 1976. And as I said, I saw most of my away games during this these periods and say between 1976 and 78, I probably there's not many away games I missed, so I would have been there at, at Leicester for that game. Uh, I did, I did, he did wear Colin Bell's number eight uh, for that one, which uh, he did go on to wear for most of the season. And then I think uh, Colin... Only sort of came back a few games a season after, so he sort of took it back. But uh, he did wear the number eight that season anyway. Uh, he scored his first and City's only goal in at, uh, at home to Juventus. And I missed that one. I would have to admit I missed that one because when we played Juventus at Main Road, I was actually on holiday in Italy and I was watching it with the waiters in um, in, a, in a back room in uh, in Marotta, Marotta in Italy. Uh, so that, that's typical of me, wasn't it? So obviously when, when I went back home, uh, we were playing in Italy. So, it's not about typical City, it's a bit of a typical Bernard, but uh, yeah, so I did actually miss that home game against Juventus where he scored. And that was on the uh, 15th of September, but sadly, as you all know, we did. That was the first round, and we did actually go out with a 2 0 loss in, in Turin uh, later on. Uh, his first actual league goal came at Norwich City. I'd say I was uh, 30 foot. So, yes, I was at that one because I went to Italy, and obviously in the September, I was back, well back for then. So, I was at Norwich City on the 30th of October. That was his 10th league game. So, he, had, he hadn't exactly set the world alight on his league games, but uh, in a 2 0 win. Uh, he scored one of the goals and Joe Royal's got the other. They sort of quite a foil for each other, Royal and uh, and Shannon. Uh, Shannon. He come he comes in it later. Royal Royal and Kiddo. There you go. I've, I've give the game away. I've give the game away what happens next season. I'm uh yeah, once he got that first goal or once he got that first uh, league goal against Norwich City, it did become a bit of a regular thing. He did he did score quite regular. Uh and his first league goals in front obviously you say his first goal was the Juventus at main role, but his first league goals in front of the main road faithful were a, were a brace a couple of goals against Derby County on December the 4th uh, in a 3-2 win he also scored 
in a 1-1 draw at home to West Brom and that was his first goal in the FA Cup for City that was on January the 8th 1977 and his first and I think his only hat trick I've had a quick look through the records I can't see another one uh, came on again well Leicester significant at uh, home to Leicester on the 22nd of January uh, 1977 yep January 1977 uh, at home to Leicester he scored a hat trick in a 5-0 win but he actually scored four goals he actually scored four so he went mad there'll be something on screen there about it uh mike doyle getting the getting the other goal as well and not surprisingly he won the city's player of the month award for Jan january 77 so there you go that was that wasn't surprising was it really um so Kidd has mentioned, as I said, that, that season he finished as top scorer for City and uh, say so nearly helped bring the title to us as well. That was the closest we were going to get in the, in probably in the 70s. Say we had a few few misfires, etc. But uh, by the end of the season, of course, we were had to be happy with runners up uh, spot to uh, to Liverpool. So there you go, we missed out on that. So he nearly, very nearly fired us. But hey, hey it was still 1977, 78, was it? So uh Obviously, we still had big ambitions, and here we go. I let it slip early on, and so in came a certain Mike Shannon as well into the mix. Uh, obviously, another forward. So obviously, this wasn't this sort of didn't didn't bode well. I mean, Colin Bell was expected to come back as well. Don't forget this season. He was we were still hopeful. Fingers crossed that he could. But uh, yeah, rather than uh, threatening Kiddo's position, it actually brought about the departure of Joe Royals. Yeah, so uh, Kiddo took over the number nine shirt for uh, a lot of this season, for the majority of this season. Uh, so he's quite happy with that and again with as he was with Joe Royal he sort of had quite a good understanding with Mike Shannon as well who took a little bit of time to get going but again was a another eh, under under uh, under what's the word um yeah, Mike Shannon, yeah, he did, he did a pretty good job, but I say he was certainly at the time, he was unappreciated, I think that's the word we're looking for, but uh, yeah, they, they both worked well, quite quite well together. He scored his first goal in the League Cup, uh, Brian Kidd, on the 31st of August in a 1-0 win at Chesterfield, they have a mighty Chesterfield, uh, and of course, uh, the season before, 77-78, we didn't mention it, but 76-77, uh, uh, but uh, We'd actually lost both Derby games that, that season, so that wasn't very impressive. But on the 10th of September 1977, in this season, at Main Road, Kidd uh, scored two and Shannon the other in a 3-1 in a win over United. And he also scored at, uh, at, at Old Trafford, I was going to call it something derogatory then, but on March the 15th, 1978, he also scored at Old Trafford in a 2-2 a draw in front of 58,398 fans that day, quite a big crowd, uh, I think that was almost capacity, I know it was 63,000 for a while, but I think it had been reduced slightly by then. Uh, sadly again though, we'd, we lost, he didn't, he didn't, obviously not much chance of European glory, because we'd gone out in the first round again against uh, Vidze Blods, of course, uh, uh, with Kid not bothering the scorer for the for the home leg, where we drew 2-2, and obviously we lost on away goals, because we only drew 0-0 over in Poland. And we did actually finish a slightly disappointing fifth, although uh, we did challenge for most of the season. It was always a little bit of a letdown. We're up to second and third and up, up near the top, etc. But uh, we did have one achievement that year. We recorded one of the highest average attendances in our history. And, of course, uh, we were quite attractive to watch, and that had brought the fans back as well. We were averaging just under 42,000, which was uh, quite 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 good well very good and it's only united and liverpool could better it and uh, obviously as i say the, the things looked okay still didn't they even, even though we didn't quite didn't quite work out that season obviously we didn't have any cup runs and we didn't do very well in the in european but fifth was okay but it was a little bit disappointing so it wasn't a total disaster and uh yeah, there was no hint of what was to happen during the 1978-79 season, certainly not, not pre-season as well. Uh, of course, uh, what we're going to do in part two, we're going to have a look at the City Yearbook of 1978-79. Uh, there's a little piece in there entitled "A Day in the Life of Brian Kidd," and this is this is the start of his season where he didn't get through it. We didn't, didn't get to complete this season, so please, uh, if you enjoyed this, please join me for part two as we look at the seventy-eight, seventy-nine season where things sort of start to go wrong for uh, Brian Kidd and Manchester City. 
Anyway, thanks for watching. What are we going to do the rest of the day? Have a great one. Look after yourselves. Look after your friends. Look after your families. More importantly, let's all look after each other. So we meet here again on the Citizen Channel. Or you have a flit across. Have a look at my film and TV channel if you get a chance. All I ever ask you to do is please stay safe, Blues. Come on, City. Thanks for watching. Bye for now.